Hi, welcome to another video. So, Microsoft has launched their new models in the Phi 4 lineup, which are reasoning models, and I wanted to talk about them. There are three models, which are the Phi 4 reasoning model, Phi 4 reasoning plus model, and the Phi 4 mini reasoning model. The non-mini reasoning model is the 14 billion parameter model that apparently rivals much larger models on complex reasoning tasks. It apparently achieves better performance than O1 Mini and DeepSeq Distilled Llama 70B on most benchmarks, which is actually pretty good to see if that is true, but we'll see about that. There's also the Mini Reasoning Model, which is about 4 billion parameters and can apparently outperform models like the DeepSeq Distilled 8B model which is pretty good to see, as it's half the size of something like an 8B model, which is kind of cool to see. But there's also another model called the Phi 4 Reasoning Plus model. This is basically the same as the reasoning model, but it is also further trained with reinforcement learning on a small set of 6K high-quality, math-focused problems with verifiable solutions. So, it will be a tad bit better on math problems, and that's it. Now, if we talk a bit more in depth about how the model was trained, then it's actually quite interesting. So, their model uses synthetically generated responses. They generate both reasoning traces and final responses and combine them into a structured format consisting of thinking and answer blocks. Now, the interesting part that I saw in the paper is that the responses that are used exclusively during supervised fine-tuning are synthetically generated using O3 Mini, which provides high-quality reasoning traces, which is fine. But just think that if this was written in a paper by DeepSeek, then the uproar on the internet would be so high, saying that they copied and whatnot. But it's obviously fine for Microsoft, because they almost own OpenAI, and it seems that they would have used the raw thinking traces, which are not even available to mere mortals like us. But there's that. They also used a thing called Seed. Seeds are a set of prompts or problems which are used in both supervised fine-tuning for Phi-4 reasoning and reinforcement learning for Phi 4 Reasoning Plus. We begin by collecting a diverse and comprehensive data set of questions from various web-based sources. They supplement this with synthetic questions generated to be grounded in high-quality, filtered web content. At this initial stage, their focus is on maximizing diversity and coverage. Basically, these are synthetic questions that are generated just on the areas that Phi 4 is bad at. Another thing that I found interesting in the paper is the system prompt that they have trained it on. They have trained it to always print the thinking traces in the reasoning prompt, and they have enforced that with a system prompt which looks like this for it. I found it interesting because you can use it in some other models as well to make it think if you want. So. You can have this in your bookmark and use it somewhere when needed. For the Phi 4 Reasoning Plus, they use the Group Relative Policy Optimization, or GRPO, which is the same method as DeepSeq, and it is mainly used here just for mathematics and nothing else, which is a bit of a disappointment for sure. I would have liked a much better coding model, but it isn't as great in coding. I have used it myself and it works fine for general questions, but not at all great for coding. Like, it can't do proper tool calls or anything. So, there's that. It struggles, and Quen3 is better at reasoning and stuff. So, I will recommend that, and I'm a bit disappointed with this model for sure. But, there are some things that it is good at, especially the mini model, which is also kind of cool for the size, which is good and you can obviously fine-tune and everything like that. It is available on Olama as well, so you can try it locally, 
which is kind of cool. However, it is also available on GitHub models, so you can head on over there and use it, and it also has a free API there which you can use. So, let me just tell you how you can use it with anything that you want to use, mainly Klein and RuCode. So, you can also go ahead and just grab your GitHub API key, and then just open up VS Code or anything like that, and then just choose what you want to use, like Klein or RuCode. Now, head on over to the settings and create a new profile, and then select the OpenAI compatible option as well. Now, head on over and put the base URL that you get from GitHub model, and then also put in the model name and save it. Now, you should be able to use it accordingly. I'm not using it as much because it doesn't perform well with tool calling and stuff. So, there's that and the context window for the models is also low and not as great. That's also an issue. GLM4 is still the best coding model that you can probably use locally, and this might be good for general questions and answers. But for anything else, it is not as good. I liked the base Phi4 model, but these reasoning variants are not as good, and it shows that making these reasoning models still remains a tough option for companies, even like Microsoft, to nail correctly. Anyway, I really found it cool, and the research paper is also amazing. So, I've been reading through that, and thought to share my thoughts about it, and tell you guys about it as well. You can go ahead and fine-tune it, or anything like that, which is the best part about having open weights models. The license is also very non-restrictive, so that is also super cool to see. I really would like to see a Phi4 coding-focused model that would actually be a really good coding model that we can use locally. I also would have liked to see better tool calling support in these models, but that is not yet available. So, there's that as well. Let me know what you guys think about these models in the comments and if you have found a good use case for it yet, and if it is turning out to be useful, it can be easily run on a computer with like 16 gigs of RAM, which is pretty awesome for sure. So, comment below and let me know. Please subscribe to the channel and share your thoughts as well. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.